we saw this in the last class, right? How do you represent fits, types and interpretation of fits, the different types of fit that, that we have, right? And how do you represent that? Isn't it? Yes, there are still only 15 participants. Let me share the whole screen. Yes, now they are visible, right? Both the AutoCAD screen and your lab manual. Is it? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So you see, we had discussed that, that there are three types of fit that we have, right? Clearance, transition and interference. And the two types of system that we have for uh, measuring that uh, fits, representing those fits. Uh, shaft basis system and hole basis system, right? Uh, and can anyone summarize what we, because I told you in the last class, right? What, what happens in a shaft basis system and what happens in a hole basis system? We discussed this in the last class. With the diagram itself, you can say it if you observe closely. Yes. Nobody remembers. You see, in a shaft basis system, as you can see here, this is your shaft basis system, right? So in your shaft basis system, you see this is our basic size that is specified by the design, right? As per the design specifications, you'll have a nominal size. And with respect to this, okay, as a reference, you will decide uh, the deviations, upper deviation or lower deviation. So when we are saying that, when we are restricting the deviation of the shaft to only go lower, okay, there is only lower deviation allowed, right? So if that is the case and you're not allowing the upper deviation, then we can say that that is a shaft basis system, that the shaft can only deviate, okay, below its basic size and not above its basic size, okay? That's what we discussed. So in shaft basis system, this happens. And hole can deviate the variation of the, the, the tolerance range of the hole 
can be either above the basic size or below the basic size right as for whole basis system you are only allowing the hole to deviate in the upper uh, above the basic size right or uh, basic size or zero line basic so hole is only allowed to deviate in the upper side that means if if for example the size of the shaft is 40 mm then the hole i'm sorry if the size of the hole is 40 mm then the hole can only go above 40 and not below 40 okay that's the range above 40 40 let's say the tolerance range is 0.2 so it can only vary between 40 and 40.2 okay that's what it means it cannot go below 40 right the shaft can vary as per the tolerance range it can vary both above the basic size and below the basic size but because you are considering whole basis system you will have this kind of notations okay is that clear okay we represented this here right we had represented clearance fit right and transition fit and this interference fit we almost ended with this did not give the names etc what we even went for whole basis system and shaft basis system right so let us write what we missed control v this is your shaft basis system isn't it yes shaft basis system so we have drawn it like top and bottom the top represents your whole basis system which is this isn't it that the hole is only varying above the basic size and we are not dependent on the basic size also we'll we'll take that okay we'll take text okay too small mm -hmm. well, maybe 25 okay and uh, maybe with the help of a leader line multi leader you can specify that this is the basic size okay and we'll copy that control c control v
okay basic size and in here also i believe that is okay self evident here because it is varying both sides so we specified this the doubts regarding the representation yes no doubts okay so you see now now we'll see one oh, yeah i told you i'll show you that video right about this shaft basis whole basis system let me show you that Okay, let me share that. Is the video visible to you? Is the video? screen being shared yes okay so you see uh, this video will will see what are the different types of fit okay those three clearance and transition interference okay lesson we're going to take a look at different types of fits between the parts of an assembly able to hear the audio also right please confirm okay okay When designers and engineers design products made from more than one part, they have to make decisions about how those parts are going to fit together. Will they be tight fitting or will they be loose? Exactly how tight or loose? These are things that designers learn from experience and the context of the problem that he or she is working on. Some key questions we're going to be answering in this lesson are, what are the different ways that parts can be fit together? What is meant by the term MMC and how do I calculate allowance? So let's get started. The first type of fit we're talking about today is called a clearance fit. A clearance fit limits the size of mating parts so that a clearance or a space always results when mating parts are assembled. Take a look at the block game on the left. The blocks need to be able to slide easily through the correctly shaped hole for the toy to work. The pieces are designed so that there's always a small space between the block and the holes. Another example would be sliding drawers or the cup holder in a car. These aren't things that we want to have to force together, so they're designed with a clearance fit. Is that clear? Yes. Because uh, only when the the part that is going inside is having a dimension less then the uh, original part okay or or what we call is as i told you right uh, shaft and hole is what we re, uh, generally refer to so in here also that cup that you are seeing right is basically a kind of uh, shaft and hole system we, we can call so the dimensions as we know 
of the hole has to be somewhat larger so only then it will result in a clearance fit right so these are all examples so that uh, that we can relate to right so that we can remember oh, what actually clearance fit means would be sliding drawers or the cup holder in a car these aren't things that we want to have to force together so they're designed with a clearance fit here, the maximum size of the axle is 10 millimeters, and the minimum size of the hole is 10.15 millimeters. If these parts are manufactured within tolerance, there will always be a clearance fit between these two parts when the axle is inserted through the hole. Another type of fit is will always be a clear. Doubts. Yes, you see, uh, we see that the minimum size of the hole is 10.15, isn't it? That's the minimum size of the hole. The maximum it can go to is 10.25 and the minimum is 10.15. So even if the hole was made or uh, after manufacturing, we get the hole size to be 10.15. That's the least, okay, accepted value. So even for 10.15, if it is manufactured, then let's say the shaft was manufactured for a maximum size of 10. That is the maximum that it can go. So even if it was manufactured for 10, we still have a clearance of how much? How much clearance will we have? If I, if, if we, uh, if a part is selected that has the right part, if let's say it has a size of 10.15 and the left shaft has a size of 10, Exactly. So how much clearance will we have? don't know it's very simple right you see what is what, what what do you mean by clearance it is the difference right it is the difference between the sizes of the two right so if we have a hole that was manufactured for 10.15 okay and a shaft of a maximum size that it can go is 10 then you subtract that 10.15 with 10, we get 0.15. That's the clearance. That's the minimum amount of clearance that you'll get. Isn't it? Is that clear? Okay. You could have a, ma uh, a larger clearance as well, isn't it? We're talking about the minimum clearance that will that that will be there, because we are selecting the least hole size and the maximum shaft size, right? So that's the minimum clearance that you will have. You could have a maximum clearance. How? When you have a when you take the hole of the largest size possible, and the shaft of the smallest size possible, isn't it? So the largest hole size that can be there is how much? Ten point two five. And the smallest shaft size that we can have is 9.92. So can you tell me what, what will be the maximum clearance that we can have? you see the max all we have to do is subtract isn't it the maximum hole size that we can have is 10.25 and the minimum shaft size that we can have is 9.92 subtract that 
it's like uh, point five point three three right point three three that's the maximum clearance that we'll have okay if if these are the range of uh, what do you call it? these are the tolerance range okay so that's about the maximum clearance that we can have okay so this is clear right clearance fit Okay, then we'll move on to clearance fit between these two parts when the axle is inserted through the hole. Another type of fit is called an interference fit. In this case, the sizes of the mating pieces are limited so that there is always an interference between the parts when they're assembled. This type of fit is used when pressure between the parts is all that holds them together, such as the cap on a pen, the rubber tire stretched around the plastic wheel, or the toy bricks that snap together. For these products to function, there must always be interference between the parts. In this case, the minimum size of the axle is 9.92, but the maximum size of the opening is 9.90. Therefore, if the parts are manufactured within tolerance, then the axle will always be larger than the opening. This type of fit may be called a press fit or a force fit, such that the two parts must be pressed together in order to assemble them. Other times, one part will be heated to the point that it expands and fits onto the other part easily. Then, once it's cooled off and shrinks back down, the fit between the two parts is incredibly tight and can't be removed by human hands. The term transition fit is used to describe situations where mating part in the two parts is clear interference fit. You see, this is the exact opposite of clearance fit. So what we have here is uh, an interference basically. Right, so the shaft is always greater than the hole. The shaft size is always greater than the hole. So how will we check that? You see, what is the uh, minimum amount of what is the minimum shaft size that we can have? Nine point nine two. Right, nine point nine two is the minimum shaft size that we can have. And what is the maximum hole size that we can have? Nine point nine, isn't it? You still have, you still would have an interference, right? Because this is the maximum size of hole, 9.9, .9, but still the shaft size, which is minimum is 9.92. So this will not fit 0 0.02, right? Is the interference that you will have minimum amount of interference. Clear. All you have to do is take the minimum amount of shaft size that we can have and the maximum amount of hole size that we can have and subtract the difference and there you will get the minimum amount of interference there could be maximum also how much would be the maximum now can you tell me because we did it similarly for clearance but also right you see what is the maximum amount of shaft size that we can have 10 right and what is the minimum amount of hole size that we can have 9.85 exactly opposite case you take for minimum clearance what uh, minimum interference what you had taken okay exactly opposite parameters you take okay other than those parameters what else is there you have 10 as a maximum shaft size and 9.85 as the minimum hole size then this will result in a maximum interference, right? So how much is it? 10 and 9.85. So you have 0.15, right? That's the maximum interference that you'll have. 
and I, I i even mentioned and it was also discussed in the video if you have such kind of cases where even with force you are not able to do that right because obviously the, if the shaft size is more than the hole then you'll have to apply some force for the shaft for for you to fit the shaft into the hole then other than force what you can do is heating right if you heat up the hole because solids expand on heating right so the hole size will increase right so then you can insert the shaft and upon cooling of that hole it will shrink right contract and then it will firm firmly hold the shaft so there will be stresses etc but you you will have a fit you will have an interference fit right clear interference fit okay then incredibly tight and can't be removed by human hands the term transition fit is used to describe situations where mating parts may have a small clearance or interference depending on which end of the parts tolerance they were manufactured to a transition fit typically results when the goal of the fit is to be exact and the tiny amount of clearance or interference that results from incidental variations in manufacturing are negligible meaning as long as the clearance or interference is small enough it won't really affect the functionality of the product a good example would be a gear that fits precisely on a drive shaft the fit can vary somewhat if it has a tiny clearance the gear will slide onto the shaft more easily and the shaft will still drive the gear if it has a small interference it might take a little firm pressure to push the gear onto the shaft either situation results in a working assembly and ideally the hole in the gear would be exactly the same size as the shaft but as we know all manufactured parts have some variation in their actual measurements in this situation the peg could be as large as 10.08 mm and the hole could be as small as 10.05 mm resulting in an interference however the very next assembly off the production line could have a peg as small as 9.95 mm and a hole as large as 10.15 mm resulting in a clearance since both of these situations are acceptable within the tolerance of the parts that makes this a transition fit when we think about how parts fit these situations was that clear <clears throat> transition fit you see it uh, in transition fit you have chances of both fit appearing okay you could have a clearance fit you could have an interference fit depends on which part have you taken okay because within the tolerance range like for example 9.95 to 10.08 for the shaft we are within the tolerance range okay if any part is produced in between these two we say that it is an acceptable part right and even for the hole if it is between 10.05 and 10.15 if it is produced then we say it is acceptable but even with these uh, within these acceptable levels as he was pointing out that one part let's say has one shaft you have picked it has a size of 10.08 when it was manufactured and we measured it we came out to be 10.08 and another hole we took okay another part with a hole so that it, the, the dimension of that hole came out to be 10.05 so because the shaft is the shaft dimensions are higher than the hole what fit will it result in
you see the shaft size is more than the hole so that that would lead to an interference fit isn't it an interference of how much 0.03 right to be exact if we take a shaft size of 10.08 and a hole size of 10.05 right and same a okay, case so okay you have these uh, what do you call the same tolerance range okay we have but now when we have taken a part okay the part uh, the shaft size came out to be 9.95 whereas the hole size came out to be 